I never knew that. Wow, I I feel honored now. You I should. thought I thought my parents named me Hugo because my father was slightly drunk yes. from the day I was born, but I it guess happens. not. The uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Hugo Soldier Shim, and I am so pleased to be with you, even though. I'm not very excited for this World Elite versus uh, Young Glory game. However, I do think we will have some um, really fun games coming up, and you know, it's always a pleasure to be with you, Nick. You know, I, I just realized at the start of that right there, my mic was actually muted on stream, so the, the, the full what? intro didn't go what? through because I'm just too oh. cool like that. So, that hello, is. ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, I am Nick Yako. Unfortunately, you could not hear me, but again, yes, join with Soldier. We're bringing you this fine coverage of the tents and LPL. We do have two sets of two for you tonight, or t today, wherever you're at in the world. First off is going to be Team WE versus Team Young Glory, and the second one, OMG versus IG. That's a very hyped up match. Nick, I still I still can't believe you put me on blast like that. Oh my goodness, that is so Woo! embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, but these, I think especially the OMG versus IG game is what our fans will really be looking forward to because, you know, that is, it, it of course, it's a rematch from the um, LPL playoffs. A lot of, and that's when Xiang was still at the mid lane for OMG and IG did, you know, fairly easily crush, you know, the men in black. So we're, I am very excited to see how um, both of these teams do, especially with, you know, new players at both the top lane for IG, they brought in the young Korean player Youngsu, and at the middle lane for OMG, they bought, brought in arguably the greatest mid laner in Chinese history. Cool. cool! Deserves more hype than you tried to give, so I tried to let go. Cool! Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll let you do that kind of thing. Uh, I'll just, you know, I'll sip my tea right here. I got some water with me. And uh, this is going to be a very long yeah. cast because, you know, just these World th these world Elite games, to go into a little bit of analysis, to do a little bit of my job, these World Elite games do tend to drag on for a really long 70 time. 70 like, minutes. Yeah, 70 I mean, I, minutes, just like yes, two nights ago, rather. I, I feel like their micro gameplay, like their positioning and their handling of certain objectives, like, you know, Baron, Dragon, you know, their Tower Siege is also very good, even though World Elite mostly does pick Tower Siege compositions. But you know their micro gameplay is very good. But you know, the putting them in, the, they're putting them the, in um, themselves in positions to succeed. That is where World League kind of falls off, and that's where you know you want to hire the coach, you want Hero to teach these players um, how to put themselves in positions to do well and to eventually capture these objectives. But for some reason, World League's you know grasp of um, you know rotations and being able to move in to comfortably. Uh, grasp objectives is not as crisp as it could be, and not as crisp as, as as I would expect. Especially since Hero did bring in, you know, Ninja and Axine specifically to be able to communicate with those two players better than um, they would have Sukim and Ruro. Yeah. So it looks like right now, uh, going over potential <laughs> lineups on screen for y'all. So. Before picks and bans, we might want to go over those as well, potentially. For the side of Young Glory, top lane, going to be number one, the jungle, Yin Fu, mid lane, Dan Gwyn, Dian Goon, rather, if I can get my pronunciations, AD carries Zen Long, and then support Yancer. And I'm the... S oh, and if I'll have the pleasure of announcing the side of World Elite, or do you want to talk about YG first? Uh, I mean, if we're, if we're just going to talk about the YG lineup... Yeah, if we're going to talk about YG's lineup, there's nothing really special, you know, to be frank, there's nothing really special about the side of YG. Their bottom lane, unfortunately, is pretty weak. So, in the event that um, the dual lane from Young Glory does decide to, you know, lane against Wei Xiao and Conan, I expect them to get thoroughly stomped because <laughs> they're just not they're just not at the professional tier at this point. I am honestly expecting, I know you can see champions like Yancer playing people like Nami and Annie, but potentially I'm expecting a soon-to-be Blitzcrank, as he does play a lot of that Blitzcrank, so I'm hoping that we can see that one, because just imagine those face grabs onto Wei Zhao, Wei Zhao just getting destroyed. <laughs> so, probably now, as the WE lineup is being gone over, we should probably go over that as well. So, in the top lane for WE, it's going to be Chao Mei. In the jungle, Sin, the mid lane, Ninja, AD carrying support, Wei Xiao, and Conan. 
I mean, you really have to look at the jungle and mid lane positions. And I'm sure, you know, that's all the talk of China right now. Just, I mean, because, you know, me, but, you know, other members of, you know, some of my other colleagues who, you know, like to, are fans of the Chinese League of Legends scene, we were all just really stunned at this kind of move, especially since, in my opinion, first, straight up, Sukim is much better than Ninja. I mean, Ninja doesn't touch the dirt on Sukim's shoes. I think that that's how clear of a difference there is between these two players. And especially since Sukim was still at, you know, kind of the growth stage, it really was puzzling to see Hero remove Sukim in favor of, you know, a Korean mid laner who never really impressed me. You know, back in the OGN, Old B really carried that team and that lane. Ninja, I don't think, ever did you know, anything really special. And on the jungle side, while Axine, Axine is you know, really famous. He was in the Jinner organization. He took some time off because, as you might remember, um, he was he used to be on the AQ Esports Club, which mm -hmm. was involved in the scandal, and which, you know, the scandal which led um, former AD Carry Promise, also known as Fimir, Fimir to um, attempt to commit suicide. Luckily for us, he failed. But... You know, after taking some time off, Axine did move to the Ch to China, and while he is a little bit more polished than Rue, I think Rue had you know much more potential than Axine ever will have for the rest of his career. So now I'd imagine we're going to get into picks and bans very very soon, but I just want to say I was told you were going to be blunt about your statements on WE. <laughs> so I mean, you know, just to yeah, I mean, just to go over. World Elite Perfect is start. not a, yeah. World Elite is not a very good team. When I was talking with some with some of my colleagues, I predicted them to come sixth, fifth or sixth in the LPL. And even though they have pulled out a few good wins, I think they're very predictable at this point. And you know, pick you know, picking and banning against them is very easy. You just have to ban you know some of the split pushing top laners, some of the AD carries that scale really well because. Essentially, World Elite only knows how to split push and siege towers. If you ban out the Kogma, ban out the Kale, ban out the Lulu, you know what does World Elite really have? Because clearly, you know Conan can't play Nami. Let's just put let's just put it out there. Conan can't play Nami. So if you ban out certain key champions or pick away certain champions for from World Elite, it's really easy to capitalize on their mistakes. So hopefully, YG does decide to do that, even though their pick ban phase has been quite uh, suspect. For the past few weeks so on that note though looking at the standings for this lpl right now it's a four-way tie for first place we included in that tie with other teams such as lgd and ig respectively so i mean you say possibly not the uh, best start maybe a sixth place prediction but started off fairly nice in this uh lpl summer season so wait and see it but we are into picks and bands ladies and gentlemen so let's just go ahead and get to it thresh down for the count leblanc down for the count and cast in these chinese players definitely targeting out those mid lanes yeah i mean you know thresh and brahm especially since so much emphasis is put on to playmaking you know 80 carries and supports thresh and bomb brahm are both very you know good target bans in terms of trying to well not just bans in general in terms of just trying to remove the so-called OPs. Um, LeBlanc is a very good target ban against Dian Gun. His LeBlanc is fairly good and he's shown himself to be quite shaky on other champions. Um, and Cassidin is just uh, Cassidin's pretty broken right now so <laughs> that's almost a given. And we keep seeing these Kha'Zix bans. I don't necessarily agree with Kha'Zix in this 4.9 patch. We are in 4.9, ladies and gentlemen. Because um, especially since most people play him in the jungle, I don't think he's bad in the mid lane, but in the jungle he's just not that good. And really good on the side of Young Glory to take away that Kale, not let Word Elite get that top lane Kale, even though I do suspect that Chao Mei will grab the top Lulu in res as a response. So going over to number one, now we get to see, like you said, the top Lulu is available, and that is definitely one of the top tier picks in China at this time around. So definitely going to be big, as you can see, a 10.9% ban rate. So letting that one through. Lee Sin is going to be coveted in the jungle by WE, as well as that Lulu first pick. You called it 100%. Now we get to see what YG actually goes with to counter. Yeah, I mean, Lee Sin is just a really nice standard pick right now, especially in the hands of these Korean junglers, such as Axine, such as Insect. They really know how to make Lee Sin work. You know, top Lulu, it's not a, I don't think it's a surprise at all. We might even see the top Lulu, and then God forbid, I think Wei Zhao might even decide to play, you know, something like Kog'Maw or Lucian this game. So it might be one of those long, drawn-out, orderly games that 
Uh, I don't know if my body is ready to handle that kind of cast. You know, Nick, mm. <laughs> we've been on the LPL Ooh. for one day on the job. I don't know if we can go into a 70-minute game at this point in time. Yeah. Well, I mean, if Wei Zhao does go for that Kog'Maw pick, there's something that differs him from a lot of other AD carries. He is so aggressive with his positioning. He was just, if you watch the game, the 70-minute, where WE managed to just pull it away on that, or where WE was playing Kog'Maw, he was swarming into the enemy team 1v3 and just destroying their faces. He was just walking at them with little Kog'Ma face. Just obliterating face the entire it, time. So It was the it was the Akathian surprise, my friend. They, you know, I mean, <sighs> but it, it's, when you do give Kog'Ma that time, and for some reason, you know, teams, especially teams like YG that have, you know, that have been in the LSPL and don't know how to punish some, punish certain lanes correctly, they usually do allow, you know, champions like Kog'Maw to ramp up, but the Lucian, I mean, they're going for, World Elite is clearly going for the Tower Siege game again, because, frankly, <laughs> World Elite doesn't know, how to, doesn't know how to do anything else except Tower Siege, and kind of, you know, you know muddle around t muddle around Baron and Dragon, trying to look for something to do. On the side of Young Glory, uh, their comp isn't very clear right now. I, this is mostly a team fighting composition. The issue would be that World Elite has shown itself to ward very well, and Young Glory's ward, ward control, vision control, isn't very good yet. So, in the event that World Elite does ward their side of the jungle ext um, quite proficiently, you know, it might be hard for uh, YG to demand these kind of fights that they so desperately need in order to take dragons, in order to take turrets. Now we get to see what WE choose to counter out that Syndra. As far as YG's combat's concerned right now, you see a lot of lane bullying potential on the Syndra, on the Twitch, and the Kale, respectively. So, looks like we're going to see a lock-in on the Ziggs. That one's going to go to Ninja in the mid lane versus a Syndra. We got a game, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be fun. First game of tonight on this LPL coverage, YG versus WE. We have all our picks. We have all our bands. We have all that good stuff. The question is, Hubo, what can we expect early on? Right, so uh, we're, I think we're in for another 45-minute game because, you know, Ninja just locked in the Ziggs. They're clearly going for, like, the late game, Tower Siege, Kite for Wei Zhao. I would like to say, though, Wei Zhao's Lucian is freaking good. I mean, it is exquisite. <laughs> I think it's. I think when Wei Zhao plays Lucian, even though I don't think um, Wei Zhao is a top tier AD carry in China, when he does play Lucian, he when he plays Lucian, I think he automatically becomes tier one. That's how good his. You know, the Chinese call it Obama. So that's how good his Obama is. Um, you know, both Ziggs and Syndra are, you know, very classic Chinese picks. And that's because Syndra and Ziggs, since their zone control is so strong, they're not champion. They are not champions that are necessarily dependent on early warding. So you can play Syndra, you can play Ziggs without having to, you know, desperately ward your or the opponent's side of the jungle. And that's why I mean, you know, Ziggs and Syndra, I believe, were probably two of the most highly, you know, picked or banned mid laners in the LPO at least last season. And I highly expect them to be, you know, expect the same kinds of results this season. So let's go over the team compositions a bit. What are the win conditions for each side? For World Elite, the, it's basically to, you know, capitalize on that mid game power spike, really push down towers, get an early, you know, win an early team fight, get Baron, and just close out the game within 30 minutes, even though. You know, considering World Elite's <laughs> strat general strategies, that might not be very. Uh, minutes, yeah, minutes. you know, 30 minutes might translate to 70 minutes. 70 minutes might translate to an hour, to two hours. We don't know. For Young Glory, really, they have a nice late game team composition. This, the Syndra is very flexible. You can use it as an assassin. You can use it to zone. Even though there aren't many champions to zone on the side of World Elite because they did pick the Lulu and the Ziggs. So I probably I expect Yang Gun to use the Syndra as an assassin and really try to late reach that late game so um, your top laner num number one can just split push all day and the rest of your team can start you know making picks based off of good vision control the question is of course can YG can Young Glory obtain the vision control necessary to win this game so ladies and gentlemen as you can see we are on to summoners rift for game one of this set of two between team WE and Young Glory so now it looks like we get to see a little bit of a Slow play on the early game. We'll see if there's a potential invade. Looks like YG gathering around just a little bit up by this river for right, a potential the, red brush invade. Yeah, the most interesting thing will be, and Wordly is going to know where, generally know where the early wards are coming out. So 
the oh, and they do get at the ward. Nice. The the right. The main thing is going to be whether Word Elite will make the appropriate moves to get um, the two v two because you know Lucian Luna is a very strong lane, and I think that appropriately they do want the duo lanes to face off against each other. Especially as I said before, Wei Zhao and Conan, as bad as Conan has been throughout um, this LPL season, Wei Zhao and Conan are heads and tails above. Jin Long and Yan Sir. Is that the expression heads and tails? Maybe it might heads be and neck tails. and shoulders. Cats and dogs? And shoulders. Heads and Cats shoulders? And you know, raining men? I, I have no yeah. idea. So, heads and tails <laughs> above, you know, yes. the bottom lane coming out from the side of Young Glory. So, we're going to see double red buff starts just invades on both ends of the count. And it looks like it will be that forced 2v1 setup in the yes. bottom lane and in the top. Yeah, it does look like it. This is a very. Interesting level one. Ah, uh, no, standard. Yeah, standard level one start. Um, starts from all sides. Even though, uh, Jian, um, Zhen Long technically shouldn't be there. He should be freezing the wave. But, uh, <laughs> you know, st um, standard two v ones coming out. And base. I think that this is mostly in Word Elite's favor because when even though Word Elite did want to look for the duo lane, they it doesn't really matter for them because if they do get to push down a tower very early, then four members of Word Elite can group in the mid lane to start oh, sieging towers and you know really try to win the tower race. And nice poke from Ninja on to yeah. Yansir. He's actually flashing, and now it's gonna be Chow Mei taking the damage. That's first blood going over in the jungle oh, to Yin Fu, and now that's a very nice start of your team YG. And that's gonna be the flash force as well in the jungle so pause comes out but first blood right over to the jarvan yin fu picking that one up for young glory yeah i was actually watching the wrong stream right there but um very nice kill <laughs> on the side oh uh, i know I'm, I'm messing up pretty hard twitch chat don't hate me please. i was watching hot shot gg stream some solo key really quick yeah dude you know i, I gotta watch my daily double lift you know i, I can't get myself enough of that peter ping anyways so very nice on yg to get that first kill that should put them fairly comfortably ahead and, uh, you know, we, uh, if all goes well for World Elite, we might not have a 60-minute game, but it might be 60 minutes anyways because of these numerous pauses. Of course, we are. Um, these games are taking place in Shanghai. This is live, ladies and gentlemen. And Nick, how was your day today? Well, my day was actually fairly good. Went and played some golf. Then I came home and did. Uh, relaxed for a bit. And then we, we talked for a little bit prior, compared some things, talked and just bs a little bit. I think... I think we're going to do very well together. We have very good senses of humor, Hubo. Uh, I, I, I like when you talk We're bros. Me, bros? We're bros. <laughs> bros before bros. <laughs> the, uh... if, if, in fact, it was brought up to me by another caster here that our casting duo name was going to be Nubbo. You're Hubo. I'm Nubbins. So Nubbo is going to be our setup, and that's going to be our name for our duo. It's pretty adorable. Wait, was that Pyrotechnics? It was Pyrotechnics. Oh, please ban someone. Please ban Nubbo! Pyrotechnics from chat. I I don't need this kind Dude, of. Dude, that that no I don't need this no. Nubbo is so adorable. Oh my goodness. That is the best oh, name ever. Oh my goodness. So uh, just awaiting uh, just just, <laughs> just awaiting this pause to end so we can get back to the game. But again, first blood goes over to Yin Fu for the side of Young Glory, and that's flashes burned actually. You saw that Chow Mei just wasted his flash on the Lulu pick immediately and then got double knockup. So Yin Fu did very well jumping with a double knockup, securing that first blood because he got the Lulu and the Ziggs. And that just basically kind of just held it from there. Did a fantastic I mean, job. Yeah, the thing is, it's funny because World, World Elite is usually the team that likes to gank mid lane with two or three members. Um... And for some reason, the Chinese teams are always caught off guard, even though those ganks should be very predictable. But usually it's World Elite to, uh, who, usually World Elite is the team that likes to, you know, make an early play on the mid lane, especially since, um, Conan does have that Leona, and he has shown a, and he has shown a penchant when on Leona to, towards ganking the mid lane. So, um, you know, I guess it's, you know, WE that gets knocked up this time. Going to just rock it so again i was just kind of chilling so you i told you how my day was how was your day uh my day was very good i did finish uh the game known as watchdogs and it's a pretty good game i didn't think it was that good personally Ooh, yeah it's, i didn't yeah but uh those steam summer sales though those steam summer sales though a lot of room I, to talk I, about yeah I, I, I did save up a little bit of money you know from from the nlb cast and from you know working at a restaurant to get you know to capitalize on some of those steam summer sales you know 
Nick, I am a businessman. Uh, I do major in economics. You're I like an to get entrepreneur. Into, I'm an entrepreneur. I like to, you know, in, invest in the right products, and I think that I'll be very happy when I open my Steam window, of after this broadcast, of course, because I always give 110 percent towards our viewers who have so graciously joined us for um, the third day of week two in the LPL Summer Split. I will feel special whenever I open up my bank account and notice a donation made by Mr. Hubo uh, because he invests in good things. You know, uh, if, in me. I'll if, get, a, if you, get, get some loving. Right, you know, you can, uh, we, can always set the, we can always set up the video chat, you know? I mean, if you, if you want to. Uh -huh. <laughs> at some point, at some point, it's going to happen. Once this, as, as everything per get there, everything is going to be amazing. But right now, we've got to work with what given. So soon enough, though, this is going to be very, very fantastic, and it already is very fantastic. I'm having a blast right now. Hope you're doing the same Twitch chat. I hope you're having a blast as well. But not the point entirely. So the game should be starting up soon. But I mean, these pauses in China, you never know how long they could take. I actually think Tencent Games is kind of trolling us, you know, because they see the team composition coming out from World Elite, and they're like, "Oh my God, wait, this this isn't within the realm of the laws of phys physics. We gotta we gotta we gotta elongate this game somehow." So they're just putting random pauses in there. Um, but hopefully, you know, the issue does get solved. You know, honestly, just because of the way World Elite, um, to go back to the game, the way the World Elite team co World Elite's team composition works. That first kill doesn't have huge game impact, especially since, you know, first blood gold isn't yeah. worth that much within, you know, the first five to seven minutes of the game. So, as long as um, Wei Zhao is safely farming that bottom lane, and event as long as he gets the tower around, you know, and hopefully before the 15 minute mark, and they're able to rotate towards the dragon, use their early game power spec to rotate towards the mid lane and start capturing objectives, you know, the fir that first blood shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things. So hopefully, Hero, their Korean coach, former Najin house member, did tell them how to execute this composition to perfection. And I believe we're going back in. Yes, we are back into the game, ladies and gentlemen. It is important to note again that this is on patch 4.9. That is why there is a Twitch being played. So mm -hmm. keep in mind those early dragons not going to be worth as much as they are on 4.10 and all of the new items down for the count as well at this point in time. So on 4.9, have a lot of meta picks going around and it looks like we're going to see YG, top and jungler, doing that two-man push, same for WE. It's pretty much what happens. This is the standard now on these 2v1 forcing, or 2v1 swap forces. Jungle yeah, and top laner clear. It's really interesting that... Um, the Kale, number one on the side of Young Glory, hasn't. They have, both top laners haven't come to collect this wave, and that's mostly because no, um, these teams don't have vision of the enemy jungler, so they don't know that if they do, in fact, teleport to the top and bottom towers respectively for um, World Elite and Young Glory, they don't know if they're going to immediately be killed. But very good move, you know, Chao Mei, Conan, and. Um, Axine from the side of Worldly decide to take this dragon yep. and you know we were talking about those early objectives Worldly has a snowball early objective so this is a very good um, sign that Worldly know what they're doing and know what their win conditions are so making that nice little transition going over to the dragon that one's gonna be down with the count first dragon of tonight ladies and gentlemen over to team WE on a nice smite from Sin in the jungle so that's gonna be the gold now in their favor just by 100 but it's even now four minutes 30 seconds in definitely not a big differential at all we've got a lot of game to be played ladies and gentlemen so don't think anything of it we're only four minutes in and there's already been fun time all across the board and now right, and, no, yeah it's getting slow sorry down. to interrupt you but Chalme is going towards down towards the bottom lane so now the Turk side pushes. of Young Glory really has to make a decision they either have to send two members towards the bottom lane to stop the three-man push or they have to um, go for a four-man push themselves. And it does look like um, Jiang Gun, sorry, Yin Fu and number one are going to posture towards this bottom lane. So whether World Elite takes that early tower or not, we don't know. But mm, maybe they will, maybe Wei Zhao will rebalance the wave and try to you know, capitalize on the lane experience just a little bit more before taking that bottom tier turret, outer tier turret. So now Xiao Mei and Conan both going to the top lane as they leave Wei Zhao to the bottom lane to recall and potentially head up there as well. Maybe switch things up, go for a turret push, who knows. But now that's going to be looking at CS leads across the board. Pretty, the only big difference is, well, 
in the mid lane. Dian Goon doing a nice job solo 1v1 against Ninja on the CS counts, but Sin is just waiting and lurking. Oh, let's and see if now we can get a play. Could be bad. Does a ward jump trying to stun it up. Nice. And well, you can see Dian Goon doing a little bit, but he's going to go down. And that's going to be Sin picking up the kill. So now Xiao Mei in the mid lane. Ninja and Sin in the mid lane with Conan. They're looking to potentially get a turret, maybe get a fight dive. I mean, Axine really played that out well. What a really, you know, nice display of mechanics right there. And now they're all posturing towards the top lane. So let's see. Uh, it, that lane is frozen, though. So I guess they expect, you know, the, the dual lane from Young Glory to overextend at some point. But it looks like that's not going to happen. Um, but on that previous game, really nice display of mechanics from coming out from Axine. You know, able to weave himself around the minions in order to pull off that, you know, Sonic Wave Resonating Strike combo. And looks like the game is all evened up, except for that early dragon, which does put World Elite uh, about 600 gold in the lead. Yeah, so now Lee Sin going to back off, but it was potentially a three-man push on the top. And all the while, Wei Zhao has still just been farming it out in the bottom lane by himself, still down in CS. And it was shown that number one headed down there as well. And they're potentially trying to kill him right now. He's on the run. And it looks like he's getting it knocked up through a shank to the face. And they're trying to take this to full turn. But Wei Zhao fends him off 1v2. Says, hey, I see what you're doing. And I don't like it. Oh, man, the stacks. The stacks. Look at that kill. Dian Goon just gets melted again. That's 0-2. Nice crowd control stacking by WE, and they're up two to one in kills now. You know, and looking and for I was the about to lane. comment because you could really see that kill coming from so far away. You know, Young Glory had no vision on the map, and Worldly really understands how to capitalize and you know make the most of make the most of the lane experience on the board. What they basically did was that they saw that. Um, the dual lane of YG was beginning to push the lane out, so they went, pushed the wave all the way back in to make sure that they weren't losing any free lane of minion experience, and then they just went and ganked the mid lane again. And they know that because, you know, frankly, Dian Gun's understanding of how waves are pushing and where the enemy enemy usually is is pretty bad they know that it's basically a free kill and they're able to push down this middle lane turret so very nice play coming out from the side of world elite and i'm very impressed right now despite how hard i've been on them for the past mm -hmm. few weeks well ninja and dian goon trying to duke it out a little bit but yancer shows up with a little bit of ebb and flow to shut down ninja's eyes on the prize so they'll just kind of back off a little bit and duke it out but as far as this lane matchup is concerned the ziggs has a little bit of an edge looking at the goal it's almost 1000 in favor of we but despite all that yg definitely not trying to back away at any point in time they're keeping this as close as possible and uh well it looks like the 80 carries gen long trying to duke it out with chow may oh the question is can God, i get the kill? kill he's only level three boom oh, shakalaka and gen long takes down chow may and that was only with a dorn's blade on this twitch i mean Really, that was a really nice play, and that just goes to show how this 2v1 meta works. If since Worldly, I mean, since Chow Mei was only level three, he should have, he really should have continued double jungling with Axine, and then they should have just tried to exchange turrets. Now they're going to be forced forced into an exchange, and you never want to be the one answering, reacting. You always want to be the one, you know, trying to be proactive across the map. The good thing for World Elite is that they do have two turrets to take at their disposal so since both the outer tier turrets in the mid lane and the bottom lane are very low so you know the advantage is still for world elite but very nice heads up play coming out from Zhen long um to get that early kill onto xiao mei and now xiao mei is forced into the middle lane so we could potentially see tier one turret trades as the first turret goes down in favor of yg top lane tier one and a nice two man setup from the Twitch and the Nami, so bottom lane for YG making plays, but in the bottom lane it is a trade. Wei Zhao picks that one up solo. Pink Ward's going down. Dragon is taken down at 4 minutes 30 seconds, so still have a little bit more time for that one. Potentially a minute left on the counter, 42 seconds. So forgot there was a timer on my screen. I am pretty bad, but now it's going to be Sin oh, trying to goodness. duke it out in the jungle. Oh, Can he get the kill? kill. That's going to be title lane, but a nice intervention. Look at this trade going down. That's going to be a kill. For Sin in the jungle, nicely done, taking down Yin Fu. So, I don't I mean, know, that was a big duke. You know, the thing is, like, really, really, this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is what the teleport meta is. The teleport meta is all about your support and your top laner just going around trying to make plays around the AD carry and the mid laner that are usually in their lanes. So, really nice job, and that, uh, that, that kill comes all from, you know, early warding. They realize when the dragon's about to respawn. They go and ward the enemy side of the jungle. You know, fortunately get a kill, but even if they didn't get a kill, they would have gone to the free dragon anyway. So, really nice understanding 
understanding of early game concepts coming out from Team World League. Yep, they do pick up the second dragon of the game. Two to nil is the score on that front. And now the gold lead averaging up just a little bit more. They are over 1,000 in the lead, so first peak of the day. Now everybody's going to kind of reset, let the lanes play out, and we might get to see these standard 1-1-2 matchups. I mean, this is going really well for World Elite. I mean, they aren't doing outstandingly well. They're not stomping anybody. But this is basically where they want to be, considering um, WE's team composition with the Lucian, with the Ziggs, with the Lulu. So World Elite is doing very well. I do believe that the next step will be to finally you know, capitalize on the low health of that mid lane turret. Chow Mei still has his teleport up, so he should be pushing this lane out and you know, duking it out with... Um, <coughs> sorry, with number one, and then he should, after um, World Elite looks to make a play, or maybe Axie will make a play by himself, he should be teleporting down and trying to push, you know, eventually, the outer tier turret, yes, but eventually that second tier turret as well. So there's a level advantage in this 1v1, number one versus Chow Mei. Kind of wonder if he's going to try to take on the Lulu mano y mano, or just kind of let them be and just farm it out up there and wait for some intervention, no pun intended. I mean, I mean, really the oh my goodness, Nick. Really, the reason why both Lulu and Kale are such popular top laners now is because of how safe they are. You know, Lulu, of course, has the whimsy. She, um, Chow Mei has the wild growth. Both are, you know, provide very good utility and allow would allow Chow Mei to escape escape any potential ganks, especially given that he still has his flash up. So uh, Chow Mei not feeling very pressured in lane right now, and things looking still looking good for World Elite. Yep, group it up. Now we're going to see the 80 carries 1v1 duking it out a little bit in the bottom lane. Wei Zhao versus Zhenlong. Twitch v. Lucian if they try to go for it, but a potential grouping in the mid lane from YG as well. Going to just be completely nullified. They'll just back out across the board. And a little bit of a slow play here, but a roaming Leona as Conan just been across the map 100%. Took out a pink warden riv. And now he is in the mid lane just kind of Look at that Nami. He might, she might get kicked, out, um, picked kicked out. in the face. Yeah, kicked in the face by Lee Sin, the blind monk. The, uh, just, you know, World Elite's early warding. Like, look at how many pink wards are on the map right now. They're just, you know, spamming, you know, vision control all over the map. Really beautiful to see. Honestly, I don't think it's the most... Oh, and we see another kill? That's another Maybe. kill. Maybe. Potentially. Ants are getting just obliterated. An auto-attack from a distance. And you know, Ninja... Nick, I I uh, predicted that. I predicted that kill about you know, 30 seconds ago, so all credit to me. The, the Golf course, really, I mean, as said. I said before, just the early vision control from World Elite, really nice coming out. And, you know, this is really what they want to do. Early vision control, snowball leads, get blue, get the opponent's blue buff, just take everything from the map because you have a composition that really does well in the early game. And they're probably going to give this one over to Ninja, so um, Axie will be able to take another one for himself yeah. it looks like actually i think they give both blue buffs towards um to ninja so really nice sharing coming from there but we see another fight yeah hang on teleport's coming as well solar flare being used jinfu picks up the first kill sins down for the count so it looks like it'll be just full-on disengaged from there but even still a one for no trade yeah and Chaomi decides to cancel the teleport so i mean he basically, Chami decides not to, you know, engage in any silly fights. He knew that the Ziggs ultimate was down at least for about another 10 to 15 seconds um, because of that kill onto, <coughs> sorry, Jan Sears, um, Jan Sears Nami earlier. So really good decision from Chao Mei to not go down to the bottom lane. Wei Zhao tanking a lot of damage just from Zhen Long's auto attack and contaminate combination. Contaminates the E, right? It just... It yeah, it pains me I to, mean, it's gotta I mean, be. You see why Twitch got nerfed in 4.10. Just yeah. like for for a champion that's supposed to have that's supposed to have range as his utility and the ambush stealth, the stealth utility, as well as you know really just late game scaling, his early game numbers just do a lot of damage. I mean, you can't trade with Twitch. That's a given fact. So <laughs> I'm uh, ni dots. nice plays coming out from the AD carry of Young Glory so far. Yep, so now we get to see the matchups of back being forced out. So number one, going to go spend his money up. Has that little stinger ready and awaiting. Now we get to see Infu heading down to the bottom lane, but backs are forced from Wei Zhao and Conan. So maybe YG will look to take down this tier one bottom lane turret, and it'll be another trade. But the mid lane tier one goes down just even with Dian Goon sitting in the lane trying to save it. So two to one, WE with a turret lead. Right, so this is really smart coming out from World Elite. We see 
that there's one minute left on the dragon, so um, basically what Ninja d decides to do is he decides to push the wave out, take the turret, and then return back to the return back to the lane with full items. Therefore, when Wardley decides to contest the next dragon, they'll know that they're at you know they're opportun they're capitalizing on every single coin that they have in their purses right now, and that they're, and that they're at full power. So Wardley is looking very strong when they decide to go for this next dragon, and when they eventually decide to go for that next inner tier turret in the mid lane. I was not expecting to hear the word coins and purses. I tell you what, that was unique wording, my friend. You are very, very good with vocabulary. That was fantastic. Nick, you know, I did do very well on the SAT, and they, they used to have a vocabulary section, so... You know, just that Asian life coming to represent and helping me out with this LPL cast. That was random. But, you know, teams posturing up for this. Oh, and we see a nice fight right here. 2v1. Yeah, hang on. 2v1. Kem Wei Zhao nice. makes something happen here. Flashing the wall, so nothing going to come. But Sin and Conan en route to that lane as well. Dragon is up and live. And we could potentially see a 5v5. Teleport is not up for Chow Mei in the top lane, nor number one on the Kale. But he's down here already. So Chow Mei, if he wants to make this a 5v5, probably should head down soon. But until that point, YG oh potentially goodness. trying to swarm. That's going to be Sin nice getting a kill. kick in the face, back in the face. So that's going to be down for the count, Dian Goon. Now trying to trade away his shank to the face. Teleport is up, and he's heading down there right now. But it's 5-3 to three and a nice trade already. Look at that nice Aqua Prison as well. And a Solar Flare going to be dodged out. Wild Growth already up. Intervention being used as well by number one. Stun up over the wall. Make Inferno Bomb to the face, and the Culling picks up the kill. Now Wei out going on full force. Not going to chase it to full turn, but still a trade for the ages. Two none, and now let's see if the answer goes down. Here it goes. Here it goes. Sonic wave to the face. Dodging out. Nice dodge. Look at this one. Sin in the face. The answer on the run. Can he make something happen? Probably not. Oh man, little man on the run. And they get the dragon. Have you heard about the lions losing? I basically they get um three early kills they get the dra and they get the dragon and now they're in perfect position to start pushing out their waves really nice fight from Mortal Elite we said earlier that WE had to go back and buy in order to make sure that they were at full power for this next dragon fight and you really saw it in fact WE misposition mispositioned that fight after um Ax Axine got that early kill onto um the Syndra Dangun Syndra Basically, they were in a really awkward position because um, there were because the Nami on the side of Young Glory, Yancy had a really nice Aqua Prison onto Chow Mei's um, teleporting Ch um, Lulu. So, be, but because of how powerful they were, just because of their, all the early Lulu oh, got Oh baby! Look at that unstop! Look at that unleashed power. Oh, Conan baby. getting obliterated. Yeah. So now it's Chow Mei alone in the mid lane, and YG this mid lane turret. Going to be falling down 2-1 to one, unless Megan Inferno Bomb has anything to say about it. I don't think it will. And it will. So they will actually fend off. They won't tank the shots. They will let the turrets stay alive. And the wars will go down. So WE on all accounts. We do get into a little bit of a replay here so we can analyze yeah, this dragon fight. Yeah, beautiful pick on to um, Jangun right there. Just really nice. So you see Ninja is in quite an awkward position. And Yancer does get the early awkward prison onto Chow Mei. But it doesn't matter just because of how powerful the team composition of War Elite is at this at this particular point in time. So really nice job from War Elite knowing exactly, you know, what their limits were and knowing and basically understanding that despite how, you know, awkward of, of a position they were in, they could still pull out for the win in the team fight. Three early kills and a dragon, absolutely beautiful. So seven to four now and kills WE in the lead, thirty point one to twenty six one K on the gold four K gold advantage, two turrets to one. And YG now falling a little bit high. 20 minutes in. Sin just making plays across the map on that Lee Sin. So definitely a big, big coveted pick in the LPL scene as a whole. And we get to see potential kind of things maybe slowing down a little bit as we progress through this mid-game. Mid yeah, I mean, honestly, I think both teams are fine with slowing down. We're Lee is, you know, we're, right now what we're Lee needs to do is they have very good, you know, pre, um, pre ward coverage from every single side of the map so what they need to do is all group in the mid lane but you know they just want to make sure that their waves are pushed out first and they can leave ninja they know that they can leave ninja alone in the mid lane just because you know ziggs is a champion that just has such good wave clear the good thing about this really low tier one mid lane turret is yg has something to try and siege try and take down but there's a lot of wave clear from we so just gonna let it go let it do yeah let it, live. Let it let it do <laughs> i i i mean 
the thing is, and just to point out particular players right here, Yin Fu has really gotten, you know, kind of squashed in this game, in this first match between World Elite and YG. You know, he's the jungler for the side of Young Glory, and his Jarvan honestly hasn't done much. Even though he is 2-1-1, one one, he does have the two kills and an assist. I mean, he constantly, I, in my opinion, he constantly arrives late to team fights. You know, he's fairly bad at reading the enemy jungler, and he's basically getting out-rotated by Axine in all aspects of the game. So really good on Axine um, just to outplay the enemy jungler and put his team ahead that 4,000 gold within the first 20 minutes of the game. Okay, so Dian Goon gets a nice double stun up. Weak scattering at its finest, but mm. this mid lane turret's still going to keep on chugging, and oh, YG could go for it, but a solar flare being flashed out almost got it again. And poor Dian Goon has just been getting stacked up with crowd control and just getting obliterated in this game. Right, I mean, just, I mean, really nice solar flare coming out from Conan to basically blow the summoner of Dian Goon in. You know, the summoners on Syndra are fairly important just because she's not very mobile as a champion. So, <clears throat> Word Elite is in kind of a weird situation right now. They basically do want to make the pick, and Conan's Solar Flare was supposed to be that really big play that would, you know, translate into another objective. Probably the second tier turret on the si middle, second tier mid lane turret on the side of Young Glory. However, that. Solar Flare does miss. Fortunately for World Elite, the cooldown is very short, so they'll be able to push out their lanes again and then come back towards the mid lane and try to make another play. And you know, you, know, the, you see they're hiding in the bush right now, just trying to make a pick or two. Also keep in mind, Dragon is up in <coughs> a minute and 19 seconds, so thus far it's a 2 for nil setup for WE on Dragons and looking to potentially make that 3. The answer, using that pink out. Sonic Wave Lance. Oh my god, poor Dan Goon just getting stacked up and destroyed. Can he get a kill and trade it one for one? Not going to happen, even with the Unleashed Power to Ignite ticking away. So, Dan Goon down for the count again. 8 to 4 now, and that potentially sets up another Dragon for WE in 50 seconds. He actually, um, Dian Goon, I think, actually started spamming missing ping, so maybe a little bit of rage from our friend Dian Goon right here. But, you know, this is going to be a very free mid lane turret, and then right after this, they can go for the dragon. I don't think the teleport matters right here, they can still fight. Nice. Aqua Prison, though, on it, too. Stacking the knockups as well. Cataclysm on a yeah. three, but dashes up and out. Wild Growth on Ninja, and Piercing Light to the face. That's going to be Wei Zhao picking up the kill. The culling being channeled as well, but Yancer on the run, and number one probably can't do too much as well, so. This turret could be going down very, very low, and they will just let it die. Aqua Prison actually lands an aggro being forced, but can they get nice the kill, kill. onto Zhen Long? It looks like they will do just that. Potentially, oh. intervention saves the day, and they don't secure it on the other side, but over the wall, stun up on the answer as well. Very nice oh, flash. Turret goes down. Tick. Dragon is up. Buff, what the face? Oh! oh. So, Zhen Long red buff, yeah, unfortunately for the side of World Elite, the red buff tick does not take out Zhen Long, but this will mean a free inner lane, a free mid lane turret and a dragon, plus I believe two kills from that fight for the side of World Elite. I mean, again, we're, this, is, this is WE realizing what their power spike is and then just going for the subsequent objectives and just really capitalizing on, on of the mistakes on the side of YG. So the dragon goes down, oh but goodness. in turn, mid lane tier one going to be falling down as well. So. Third turret of the game. We're tied at three. The base turrets down for the count for WE, but tier two in the mid lane down as well as the bottom one. Tier one top lane still manages to survive. Three to three turrets, nine to four in kills, and the gold lead is 5,000 in favor of WE. You know, Nick, I really can't stop gushing about how well World Elite is playing right now. You know, I, I mentioned before... You're very blunt. Yeah, that, World, <laughs> that WE was basically so far in the season had only been playing siege compositions very well but now even though this is a siege composition it's not one of those you know late game drawn out really just long boring you know compositions coming up from the side of we there's no kogma there's no kale in fact i mean they're just taking advantage of you know lulu's early early utility they got the Lee Sin, the ziggs um a playmaker in conan's leona so just really nice play coming out from um uh -huh. Lee all around Gen and long. Yeah, really nice job from Zen Long to dodge both of the reveals coming yeah. out from um, Axine's Lee Sin, but this just means another free turret for the side of WE. Yep, so maybe WE getting back to those old roots. Like you said, a lot of predict predictions, putting them at number six or five in the LPL standings at the end of the season. So starting out tied for first place might just be nice, and they look like they've potentially shown a lot of improvement, maybe a lot of kind of shutting down the people who have been naysayers to them but 
WE will have to see if they can close it out in this game. Remember, it's a set of two. So even if they win this one, YG gets a chance to tie on the other side. I mean, yeah, but at this point, even though YG does have another... You know, of course, this game's not over yet. But even though YG will have another crack at the side of World Elite, um, and World Elite is, WE is looking very strong right now. And I fear for Young Glory's chances in the second game, as well as in this first game, especially since at only 26 minutes in, there's already a 6 gate goal lead. So World Elite is exactly where they want to be. And look for them to maybe start warding around Baron a little bit because by now they, you know, they can take Baron quite easily and then just, you know, go towards the enemy blue side of the jungle and start sieging the mid lane. So just all they need to do is just sweep the vision from the side, uh, sweep Young Glory's vision. And it looks like they're doing that right now. Yeah, they're heading up to take down this tier one top lane turret. That is going to be their target in question. And number one is just going to surrender it to Wei Zhao and World Elite. So down for the count, all the base turrets, four to three in favor of WE now. And they look to push again, potentially. Trying to get a grouping. Maybe we'll see a little bit of a fight, but WE just look like they want to back off. Yeah, we can see a fight, especially since <coughs> um, Yan... Sorry, not Yancy. I keep confusing the name. Zhen Long's Twitch is in the bottom lane, and Chao Mei still has his teleport up. So we could either see a fight near this um, top lane turret, or we might even see a Baron bait from the side of World Elite. They have a lot of options right now, especially given how far ahead they are. Just chilling with the wave clear, looking to push it up. They're trying to get a clutch Sonic wave, and then maybe some nice positioning from Sin. And tanking up the turret, a couple of auto attacks. Wei Zhao doesn't give two, but Twitch has made a showing. That's going to be double teleports. Both number one and Chao Mei have those up. And Jin Long trying to do some trading, actually going for it hardcore, but knocked up and out there with a little bit of a satchel charge. So. Did he just activate Spray and Prey? Rubber Ducky. I it think looks like he did. Rat a tat tat. Yeah, I think he did. So, I mean, oh, God damn it. So, the, uh, wow. The, the, so, I hate that name so much, <laughs> but. Really awkward usage of the uh, ratatatat right there from the side of um, Zhen Long's Twitch. I don't know why he would activate it, especially it was it seemed clear that he couldn't make any plays off. Um, but, oh, nice pick coming out from the side of World League. I think this might be another kill. It might be. Megan Inferno bomb. The answer, the target in question, Mikhail's Crucible. Nice job dodging the Sonic Wave, so he will not go oh. down. But actually, Sinner with the Unleashed Power. Get back to the camera, trying to flash it. Ken Dian could make something happen here. Wei Zhao getting wild growth up to the face. And that one's going to be a dead Yin Fu. Tidal Wave coming from the backside as well. And now Syndra on the run. Can they make it happen? But from the backside, Jen Long, and he picks up the kill onto Chao Mei. And now YG potentially on the aggressive and offensive. Sin just waiting around the backside, but now it's WE on the run. Wei Zhao and Conan forced to use that summer heal to get up and out. And remember, it's 4 9, so they have a little bit of an extension on that speed boost. So. I mean, that was a really you know, interesting fight. I think Conan's about to go down here, right? Yeah. So oh. I think that was something like a three for one trade um, near the Baron pit. So Young Glory actually might go for this Baron, despite the fact that Axine is still up on the side of World Elite. So Young Glory basically has, you know. A series of interesting decisions they can make right now. So what actually happened during that fight was that <clears throat> the, um, Axine tried to pull off, you know, a gank onto, you know, a pick, sorry, onto um, Diangun's Syndra. But unfortunately for him, Diangun flashed away. So that put Axine in a very awkward position to make any kind of play at all, especially given that he had burned his flash. So what that meant was that... <laughs> Diangun was effectively useless, and I'm sorry, Axing was effect effectively useless, and Diangun still had a lot of kill potential left in that Syndra. Also, um, I do have to give props to Yanser because he did have a fairly nice tidal wave, which, effect which effectively split up the side of World Elite and also landed onto Wei Zhao. So, you know, nice job from multiple members on the side of Young Glory. So Dragon's up in seven seconds. The question is, do WE want to go for this one? There's potential <laughs> pings on the Baron for YG, and if they go for this Dragon, it could be a trade, but... W has had dragon control and objective control this entire game. Probably don't want to lose that on a Baron engagement. So, Pink yeah, Wars I mean, in the pit. <clears throat> you know, Wordly, you just see how poor, really, you know, Young Glory's dragon control is. They allow Wei Zhao to effectively solo this dragon and then just scare off the side of Young Glory. And they can't even start Baron either because they can't even start Baron with this knowledge either because just the vision control from Young Glory is so just not good really they're just putting wards in random places and it doesn't look like a lot of members on the side of young glory are contributing to um, placing their you know pink wards and green wards efficiently 
So we're late in com basically in complete control of this game, and they're not scared of any kind of bait that YG is going to make because you know the information that they have all around the map is just so overbearing. So four to nil on Dragons Y or W E. They're very big on the objective control now, and thinking that off, letting Wei Jiao like you said, number one, Dan Baron <coughs> Aggro from the Sonic Wave, courtesy of Sin in the Jungle, but he'll back off, and they potentially won't go for this Baron. Might just be a little bit of a Mexican standoff in the pit, in the river for a while until things get rolling. Uh, uh, Mexican standoff? Yeah. Really? What, they're I mean, just kind of standing there, looking at each other like... Uh, I've never, Sorry. I've never, I've actually never heard of the term Mexican standoff before used like that. It's pretty common. Really? So when people, when two people stare at each other and look at each <laughs> that's other. That's called the it's, cowboy it's called, duel, it's called, my it's friend. Called, it's called Mexican? That's I mean, called, no, that's called pocket pistols, the cowboys back in the day in their little duel. I see. Okay, well, today I learned. Okay, so, so um, five cowboys versus five cowboys doing duels in a standoff uh, position is, I guess, yeah. what what is the central theme of what I'm trying to express. Well, I mean, then why are they Mexican? I don't know. Okay, so going back to the game, <laughs> we're delete reclaiming vision control of this Baron. You're killing and, me, Smalls. And looking very, looking very strong again. It's fairly surprising to see that Wordley doesn't decide to put a pl place a pink ward inside that Baron pit. I'm guessing that they use a sweeper, and for some reason they just didn't spot out that ward. So Young Glory going to be fairly comfortable trying to find a pick onto Wei Zhao, and we'll see if any of the members can find a play. Oh man, just look at that. Shen Long going in hardcore, but the tire wave nice comes out doing zoning flare. potential. Solar Flare, Megan Fertile Bomb combo into three. Ninja takes down number one, and now they're just progressing all the way through. Chao Mei picks up another kill. Flash from Wei Zhao trying to take down Yin Fu, but Jin Long gets a solo out there. Down for the count. That's going to be Yin Fu down three for nil in favor of W. They're just pulling straight up for the Baron. Thank God Conan is playing Leona this game and not Nami because Nami has always been pretty good. Really nice solar flare coming out from the side of World Elite. I'm, I was so impressed by how you know how good of it that was. Just you know that basically turned the fight around because they had got a nice pick. They hadn't had a nice position at the Twitch. Look at here. I mean, just the Twitch comes in, stealths in, activate, activates the red attack tat, but then just a beautiful solar flare onto what two, three, maybe even four people, just completely just captures the whole team. Nice Mega Inferno bomb to synergize with that solar flare. Just clean up from there. Wei Zhao decides to go in and gets the final tick onto Yin Fu. You know that looked like it was a fight engaged up by YG, courtesy of Zhen Long, and it just completely turned against them on a nice. Stacking of crowd control on the Solar Flare and the Mega Inferno combination. That was very well done. Definitely a pretty big Wombo combo right there. But 13-7 to 7 right now. A Baron up WE looking for a potential push. Maybe maybe they'll just kind of let it be for a little bit. But the goal lead is now nearly 10,000. So they've almost crossed the double digit marker. 5-3 to three in turrets. And they've just got full control of this game. Yeah, I mean, you know, 10,000 gold is... I mean, they're in a very comfortable position right now. Wei Zhao even grabbed the early Banshee's Veil to, you know, counter. Banshee's Veil is a very good item against Syndra, so nice job. And there might be another pick right here because Ninja's effectively catch. Oh, nice intervention from Kamiya saving him. Intervention, that's, that's three times that the save has been used out yeah. by number one of the intervention. Very nicely done. Oh, we might see another fight here. Oh, man, no, the Zines played. Of Ziggs. Conan trying to go in full on, but it actually might be the death of him, as you can see. Trying to make it out with as much shield as possible, but Cataclysm being used up, and Conan's just going to fall down there to Yin Fu on the Jarvan. So, 13 to 8, yeah. make it a 1 for nil. I mean, Chao Mei, I, I still, if Ch even though World Elite was in a bad position then, given the fact that they have a 10,000 gold lead, they did have a 10,000 K, um, 10 K gold lead, I still think they could have turned it around right there, and we oh. might see another fight coming out from, oh my goodness, oh, man, that might be a kill. And trying to get a nice flash scouring of the week, but the shield as well. Ooh. This is going to be, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the Sonic Wave from a distance, but down for the count, waves out from the back, and now they're trying to progress on to number one, Sonic Wave goes wide left, can he duke this out and try to kite as best as possible, who knows, but... Wild growth being used up, a bouncing nice. bomb gonna be dodged out, and Ninja picks up the kills. Zhen Long down for the count. Sin from the back. Can he take down Yancer? Trying to do a little bit of war jump. Sonic Wave being a little bit cheeky with it, but it will not be able to be taken all the way. They're going for this dive. No mana on Yancer. And look at this Wei Zhao coming from the back. Made him for the bomb. Nothing intervention. Trying to do something. But he is down for the count, and that is an ace for none. A clean ace for WE. They'll take down the tier two. They're looking for inhibitors.
Damn! That was basically a 5v4 coming out from the side of WE right there, and just really nice Lee um, mechanics coming out from Axine. His leasing is beautiful right now. So being he was he was able to basically send um, Jiangun away and away from damaging any of his carries. Follow up on the resonating strike, get that kill. Um, turn the entire fight around because it looked really bleak for World Elite at one point, and now they're able to get two turrets and an inhibitor out of this. Really nice from World Elite. You know. All they have to do is basically wait around, maybe they can find one pick, and then they'll be able to close out the game. Definitely using their Baron wisely right now, taking control of objectives all the way. Dragon is up in 20 seconds again. They have all four of those this game, four for four, none over to YG. As we do get into a replay so you can take us through what happens in this fight. Oh my goodness, look at Axiom right there. Fall is able to follow up on that, threading the needle on that Sonic Wave resonating strike. My goodness, I am spamming. I would be spamming Kriegasm in chat right now because that was sexy. And Chow Mei is able to follow go away. I don't know why. I think he must he must have been you know um, just a clicking right there because I don't know why he would attack the minions. But just really nice team fighting coming out from World Elite, and then Axine is carrying this team right now. Wait, given that every single member of World Elite is playing very well as a unit, and they seem to certainly understand you know, what they're supposed to do at all times, um, at every single minute of the game, but uh, man, Axine is just really, he's the catalyst right now for World Elite's dominance in this game. And something to notice as well, their peel has been very stellar, like that un or that scattering of the weak that landed on a ninja. He popped barrier, but he was basically safe for the most part. Their peel has just been on point this game. There's really been no YG players getting to the back line of WE, and now WE looking for more offensive, trying to take down this enemy red buff, get some counter jungle in up and in. But nice scattering of the weak and from the backside, Sin <laughs> dodged out again. He wants to go oh, run full nice force with the five, but again. there's again Solar Flare in the title as well. But Kale's Cruise will be used up. Unleash Power picks up one. Look at this trade. Megan Ferdo bomb. That's going to be a dead one. Ninja picks up the kill, but two down. And look at this Cataclysm being used up as well. Just trying to flag and drag it up and out. Sonic Wave. And you answer the targeting question for Sin. Can he make another trade happen across the board? It's a three on one. He'll run away, but. Aqua Prison does actually get dodged out by the Banshee's Veil, and they want to keep taking this one to full oh, turn. Sonic Wave out. is there. Intervention be used. Is he going to wait it out? Flash Satchel Charge as well. Getting a knock back, and Xiao Mei picks up the kill onto number one. And now two members left versus the two members. Three members remaining of W. They want to push for this really inhibitor down the right mid lane. Here? Oh, I thought they were going to go for GG. the inhibitor, but they GG. might close it out right here. It might 40 be a minutes. great game right there. They're two minutes. members up, though. We'll see if they can make a play. One Nexus turret falls down. The second one potentially soon to follow. And Team WE, ladies and gentlemen, going to be taking game one of this set of two between YG and WE. So, great advantage for them to start it off. And a nice 37-minute thriller making it happen. What a... Basic, what a stomp right there. I mean, it didn't look like it based on, you know, some of the kill scores, but, you know, World Elite played out their composition perfectly. What a really good game come from, out from WE. What a really just, you know, nice, clean, both mechanically and strategically. What a nice game from, you know, not only Axine, even though he's my MVP of this game, but just from every single member of World Elite. Kunan did very well, very well as well. You know, I'd been giving him a lot of hate in the past few weeks because, you know, his Nami left a lot to be desired, but his Leona was very much on point today. Wei Zhao played well despite getting caught out in that last fight and allowing Diangun to essentially assassinate him. Um, so... You know, good game for World Elite, and Axine is just destroying everybody right now. You know, uh, just Yinfu did, really didn't do enough in the early game. Yinfu, um, Yinfu should have invested a lot more in early ward coverage. He should have tried to track Axine around the map to at least, you know, at least stymie the ability of World Elite to capitalize on what their composition does. And just a nice methodical game coming out from WE. Nick, I am very, very impressed personally. And that's something big coming from you. You are very, very, I don't want to say critical at all, but you definitely are big I hate on. World Elite. <laughs> just be no, blunt about it. You're yeah, probably not I mean, the biggest fan ever. But. You know, I mean, really, when they got rid of Suki and Ruo, it really puzzled me because Suki and Ruo both have more talent, frankly, than Axon and Ninja do. But if, if every game is going to be played like that, then I very much respect, you know, Hero's wishes and decision making because that was a nice, nice game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we're going to take a quick break in the action, but when we come back, probably going to be around the pick band phase for set number two or set game two of the set between WE and YG. Remember, if you're just joining us. WE in a 37-minute thriller took it home against YG on a nice Baron. Nice team fights and great, great play overall. So we will be right back, play some Maz, and stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen.